Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Newman, and this is Ask Dr. Ben, where I use my experience as a coronavirologist to try to answer your questions. Today's next question, on this lovely morning, uh, actually, yeah, looking out there, is from Allison. All right, so hi, debate among scientists. Whoa, all right, yeah. Um, is the spike protein made by the body after either Pfizer or AstraZeneca vaccine, or any of them really, free in the plasma, or is it on antigen-presenting cells, or both? Um, cheers. Cheers. Yeah, I like that. All right, uh, the answer is, yeah, looks as though it is membrane anchored and probably being processed in antigen presenting cells. How do we know this? That's the question, right? Okay, so most tests, uh, or rather most um, uh, vaccine clinical trials will do two different tests looking for antibody. So one, they'll look for antibodies that can stop the virus from getting into a cell. And these are relatively few in number. That test doesn't really line up um, because of the way it's done. It's a totally different type of test. And so it's hard to compare those numbers to um, total antibody numbers, um, which is the test that is usually done that gives you an actual number response um, that you can compare. So people will often do a uh, t how much antibody did you make against part of the spike called the receptor binding domain. It's a little bit that rotates up and down. And this is the bit that will actually stick the virus to one of your cells. Um, so they'll look for how many antibodies stuck to that. And then they'll look for how many antibodies stuck to the whole spike. So what you need to know about the receptor binding domain is that it's part of the top of the spike. Um, and so if the spike is just floating free, the top actually can come off if it gets cut by one or two different proteins that are around. And so if you have just loose tops and those are being picked up and you know gobbled up by uh, cells that then present them to the immune system, you would expect to see a lot of antibodies against the receptor binding domain and the top part in general, and relatively few antibodies against the rest of the spike. What you see are a lot more antibodies against the rest of the spike than you have against the um, just the top part. So you would expect those to be roughly the same size if it was just that the spike was, uh, the top was coming loose and floating around and being picked up. Um, now, if you actually wanted to test this, which I would, I would love to see somebody actually test this, you could look for antibodies to the top of the spike versus antibodies to the bottom of the spike. The bottom of the spike is the part that is going to stay anchored into a cell. And uh, it'll be anchored inside the cell somewhere, or in some cases it'll go up to the surface and be anchored on the surface of the cell. So you'll have a cell that kind of looks like a giant coronavirus. It'll have little tiny spike proteins sticking out on the outside. Yeah, very cute. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're the only way you're going to make antibodies is if you are chopping up the entire that part of the spike and funneling it through a great big long pathway um, and it's getting loaded onto different things and shown to different proteins and then boom you've got uh, antibody producing cells same thing with t cells we could look for t cell epitopes up and down the spike and that's just a thing that a t cell can recognize and the only way a t cell can learn to recognize a piece is again if it takes that piece or something containing that piece, chops it up, pairs it down, and then loads it onto a particular protein that uh, kind of looks like a bulldog clip if you're uh, from the UK, or like a binder clip if you're from the US. And that then gets shown to the rest of the um, immune system. And yeah, that's how you uh, go about making a response. So the answer to all of this is that there appear to be useful T cell epitopes up and down the spike which would indicate that the whole spike is being chopped up, <clears throat> which means that it's not just floating around free, um, it's, it's actually there. And they did include the bottom part on, I believe, both of those spikes, so it actually would be stuck in the membrane, if I remember correctly. Now, last little caveat beyond that, so I, I think it's the whole spike, um, and I think it is like cells with spikes. So open questions. Is the cell with spikes pulling those spikes in, chopping them up, and presenting them to something else, is the cell with spikes being gobbled up by another cell 
and then digested and then processing it that way. That's called autophagy and that can, well, no, that's not autophagy, that's phagocytosis and uh, yeah, <laughs> but that can also happen. Um, it's a thing that cells do. If you're looking at thousands of cells on a microscope slide, you'll see a couple of them that are doing that, just surrounding another one and just gonna eat it. Yeah, <laughs> weird little cannibals, yeah. <laughs> um, but Pfizer also has a different version of their vaccine. So in their first vaccine paper, they experimented with two versions. One is just the top and the other is the whole thing. And I was really, really skeptical on the just the top part um, because if the virus were to change even a little bit, then that's the part that changes and that's the part that's no longer gonna work. And so you're gonna go from full vaccine efficiency to no vaccine efficiency real fast. Whereas if you put the whole spike in there, you can make response all the way up and down the thing. And even if one part changes and you don't have as much of a response, you still have all the rest of it there. And so your 90% is good, 99% is good, whatever. So that's, yeah. But um, they ended up going with uh, the longer version primarily rather than that little one. Although they are talking now about reviving um, the little one. Uh, so I think uh, BNT, some number, uh, number one, I believe, is the little receptor binding domain, just that on its own. And I believe number two is the one they're actually using in people and got uh, clinically approved. And that's the one that is the whole spike. Yeah, top to tail. So probably whole protein being chopped up by dendritic cells and maybe tissue resident macrophages is the very short sciencey answer. That's the best we've got right now. And that information is mostly based on tracing back, like saying, okay, we've made these various immune cells over here. What's the path by which you can create these immune cells? Well, they have to have been shown the protein by this cell that has to have got it from this other cell that has to have got it from this particular source. So working backward kind of thing. Um, but yeah, once a new study is done on that, I'll be very interested to uh, have a look at it and see what there is to learn, yeah. Um, so thanks very much. Very good question. Very sciencey debate. We like those. Yeah. <laughs> thanks very much. This has been Ask Dr. Ben.